Yeah, right. Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and today I'm going to be showing you around the handover demonstration on the tracker. So this is where your cassette toilet lives. So make sure the slide shut. We pull the orange handle to be able to pull the cassette out. Got some wheels there to drag around the site instead of carrying it when full and to empty. Take the, the grey cap off. Press the button, go to your waste disposal point, clip it down and push, just allows a little bit of air in, stops it plugging. Give it a rinse out, there's normally a tap there, so put some water in, rinse it out and flush it out again. And then if you are using the liquid, that's your measuring stick there, cap of that, either the blue or green chemical, into there. Or if you are using the tablets, put a pint of water into here and then just drop the tablet down the toilet. And it's just like a dishwasher tablet, so it's straight in the box and it will degrade into the liquid. Underneath, we've got your fresh water drain off, so if you filled up with water, you can then drain it here. In the winter, you must drain every water, all the water out the van, so fresh and the waste. And if you are travelling, um, you just want to keep 20 litres of water in, you don't want to drive around with a full tank unless you go while camping, so you drain off here. So we're lifting this locker up here. It opens with a flat key, you've got some storage, so you threw storage there. It goes to the other side, so great place for your tables, your deck chairs, your outdoor barbecue and things. It's all sealed in there. And I just put it down, coming out the back of the vehicle. High level brake there, the reverse camera, your kitchen window. And under here, this lifts off with the key that opens your lockers. Um, lifts this cover off and you've got a spare wheel under there. Coming around the, uh, the passenger side. Around the side of the You've got your external gas point so the spigot there, get some jubilee clips and some gas holes and connect it to your Kadak or external barbecue and then turn this on. This will then send gas from the gas bottles at the front which I'll show you to your external gas supply. And in here, this is where you fill the vehicle with water so you drain it off this side, you fill it here. So hose pipe into here, clips into there, and fill it until you overflow or you're happy you've got enough water on board which it will indicate on the main control panel. This two pins here is for the submersible pump supplied with the vehicle so if you can't get the water out and bring water out of the vehicle in a bucket or an aqua roll, put this in, you turn the pump on on the control panel which I'll show you, put the, water, the pump into the water and the other hose into here and it will pump the water into the van to the main tank. You can lock that to stop people tampering with your water. You've got your awning above. You've got your fridge fence. There's two covers on here which I'll show you. You've got two covers like so. on here and then use a screwdriver to tighten you can put these on in the winter months so from october to about spring you can still use the van with these covers on it just protects the element from the frost and then you simply clip on there and you can put them on for washing if you if you want to in here is your bit of storage underneath your um bench seat and you do have a 240 plug inside, so you can use that great if you want to. If you need a power supply in your awning, just there, you can run your cable out when you've got your awning. And you've got storage. And then at the front, this is your gas locker, so you can fit two 13 kilogram gas bottles in here. And then to do it to sort the gas out, turn on at the top of the bottle. Always turn off when you're travelling and then hand and to put the pigtail on. Got a spanner, so carry adjustable spanner with you. Left hand thread, nip it tight, and then when you turn it on, always press this green button for 30 seconds. It just allows the crash valve to allow the gas through. But if there was an accident and you forgot to turn this off, this is a crash valve, so it automatically um, cut the gas off. Around here you've got your 
diesel and add blue, so it opens with the main ignition key that you drive the van with. That's your diesel, and then your add blue. Simply take the cover off and then fill. You'll get a light in between the um, fuel gauge and the temperature gauge. It's like a little orange exhaust light when that comes on, it'll tell you how many miles until simply the van just won't start. So do keep an eye on that. Um, it is a 20 litre tank, so as soon as the light comes on, just top it up or carry some with you. But you can get it from most um, petrol stations now, as most common new cars and new vans have it. Coming round to the, uh, the passenger slam panel, on here you've got your tyre pressure, so 5.5 .5 bar front and back, which is 79.5 psi on the tyres all round. And then underneath the passenger seat, you do have your tool kit. So this has a jack nib bracing, a torn eye, and a screwdriver. So anything you need to change your wheel or be towed away with is under there. Underneath the cab mat, so underneath the cab floor, that cover lifts off. Your engine battery lives in there. But you do have jumping points underneath the bonnet. And your bonnet release is just behind me on the um, dashboard there, next to the driver's the passenger door. And your secondary cap is just above the auto trail badge. And then once inside, you've got your paint code here. So this is a Fiat paint, standard paint code. So if you do need any touch-ups for a touch-up pen or paint, you can get it from a Fiat dealership. You've got your weight here. So this is when it was a chassis cab, so ignore that. It's now been a secondary converted by auto trail. That's your chassis number. It's three and a half ton. If you were to put any tow bar on and tow a car or a trailer or anything, you tow 4750, which is combined. So it's the motorhome and whatever you're towing and then your front and back axle weights. You've got all your fluids here. So these lift off for your mechanical service. So brake fluid, radiator fluid. And the main one you're gonna need is your screen wash in the corner there. And then you've got your oil and your oil dipstick down there for checking your oil. You've got a negative for a jump start and a positive in here so this cover put a key in here and lift up and you'll have an earthen point for your positive jump start and leave that either given or receiving a bump start once inside the vehicle this is the main control panel above your habitation door. So this does everything from electric to water to your water pump and your settings. So to turn on, press the on button. This will either give you 240 volt and you'll be able to use the normal three pin plugs or 12 volt if you aren't hooked up. So you've turned it on. Up here you've got your interior lights. So they are all individually switched but you must have the master switch on. Above it tells you the internal temperature, the external temperature, and there's a little lightning mark there which indicates you are hooked up. Underneath the on button, you've got the water pump. So you put this on to surface your external shower, your internal shower, your toilet, your kitchen sink, and your wash basin sink. That must be on to push the water around, but you must only put the pump on when you've got water on board, unless you will damage the pump underneath the lights you've got the awning light so this one on the, the light the other way around is the awning light and below that you've got a dimmer so you can set the dimming of the lights in the above the front lounge to dim them down and then above underneath the pump you've got your reading so this is your fresh water this side which it's staying at 75 percent and your wastewater which is zero you will get an alarm, so this will start flashing when your waist gets low. When your fresh gets low or your waist gets high. And it indicates it either needs topped up or emptying. And then below that, you've got all your battery. So this is your power levels. So you've got your leisure battery, which is 4.4 volts. We are hooked up at the moment. So just take into consideration when hooked up, you will get... Um, a bigger reading so when unhooked up it will give a true reading so when i take that out it'll tell you tell us what it is um what the reading of the battery is you let your vehicle battery so 13.5 to 13.7 amps it is charging when the charge is on which i'll show you in a second 
you've got your active battery which is your leisure so always make sure your active battery for the motorhome is the leisure and never the vehicle because the vehicle will drain and then you'll not be able to start your engine and this is the the amps coming off the battery so it says 1.4 amp coming off so that's because we've got the lights on and then you've got the mains current so that's what's coming in off your hookup your hookup always takes priority your solar panels 0 0.0, 0 amp because it um the hookup has the priority because it's the bigger source of power so once unhooked up the solar panel will kick back in coming to your settings there you've got your active battery which is leisure i'd always leave it on leisure don't put it on smart because it'll switch between the two and definitely don't put it on vehicle and then your solar your solar um battery this is the battery the solar panels run to at the moment it's running to your it's on smart so it'll flick between the two whatever needs it so if the vehicle battery is higher than the leisure it'll flick back over or the leisure battery is lower than the vehicle it'll switch so just leave it on smart but in storage or when the vehicle's standard i'd always make sure it's on the vehicle just so it does top the vehicle battery up so you're not having to give it a bump start every time you've had it standing over the winter and things tank fill tank fill is what i was on about before outside with the submersible pump so if you can't get water to the vehicle i.e your hose pipe but you can bring a bucket or an aqua roll full of water to the vehicle you can put this on it'll then allow the submersible pump a 12 volt feed which will then kick in the submersible pump and underneath you've got your tank heaters so you can put these on when it's when either you're in a, um, a colder climate so you take it away off on your skiing holidays and things or it is cold in the, the country so from about october to march if you are using to put the tank heaters on if it's going to be cold overnight and freeze stops the tanks from freezing as it puts a small um charge through the water this is then your light setting so when the power button's on it'll um put the on and you can set it to put the on and light on and things when you um open the vehicle you've then got your dimming level for your lights underneath your bench seats at the front you've then got your backlight and your screen timeout and your key beep and your, your fresh water alarms on there and your details of your the system you can then set the date and time and things and that's basically your main control panel if it does operate your truma heating and hot water to wake the panel up press and hold and it will power up to this this screen and then enter press the wheel the van with the thermometer in is the temperature of the van so you can go all the way to off if you don't want the heating on or you can go all the way to 30 degrees once you're happy with the temperature so we'll set 25 once you're happy press enter that saves it it's preset the temperature of the van to 25 degrees coming along the water the thermometer in water obviously you've guessed hot water so you've got eco you've got off so if you just if you've got no water on board don't set the hot water off but if you do want hot water then you can turn it from off to eco which is just a lower so it takes a little bit longer um, and uses a less and a lot less of an energy source you've got hot or you've got boost boost prioritizes the hot water to the heating but for this we'll just say hot press enter and that saved that this is a picture of a gas bottle and electricity mark you've probably guessed energy source so this is the source you're heating off so you've got a couple of options you've got gas on its own so you'd use gas on its own if you weren't hooked up this is known as wild camping or off grid and then if you were to ha select gas press enter you've got mixture one mixture one's one kilowatt of electric and gas together mixture two's gas and two kilowatts of electric so in the winter months when you want to prioritize the hot water and the heating you put on mix two like so by enter this will then allow they give you two sources so it'll double your um source of electric and gas and um, putting them both together which will mean your van and your water is heating is being um heated a lot quicker but once you do don't waste your gas if you're on a site 
if you want to use this in the winter use this for about 20 minutes and turn it to electric you've got electric on one kilowatt so this is the lower output of electric so this is what you'd use if you are abroad on smaller sites or you're using too much electric and you're tripping the van you might have to turn it down or you can use electric on two electric on two kilowatts is probably what we'll use because we're you're on a site you don't want to waste your gas and that's what you would use as it's the higher output of electric and you've paid your site fees coming to the fan here this is the fan this is a 12 volt fan so you can have done eco if you're a wild camp and you don't want to waste your 12 volt so you'd have done eco it uses a lot less or you can have it on high so when you hooked up um, this is what blows it around the ducting around the van so from the front to the bathroom and you can press enter below this is a timer so you can time it to come on and off when you want so say you are wanting to get up at eight o'clock you can set it away from seven o'clock so when you get up it's nice and warm you can only do that once so, you, so you've only got one preset you can't then have it to go on it four three o'clock and go off at four you can only do that once so you'd have to change that come in here you've got your clock so this is the clock displayed on the panel so this is for setting the times when the clocks go back and forth so if we just set the time now it is 4 40 20 to 5 like so and if you did get a warning triangle it could be one or two things either you've run out of gas you're not hooked up or you simply turn the control panel off you get a warning triangle but if it's none of those things you can try and reset the boiler by going to the spanner going all the way down to reset and pressing enter once if you don't want to use this and this is on just press and hold and it will turn it off by pressing and holding but we'll not do that because we want the system to run throughout this video to operate your fetford oven and hob you've got three gas one electric 240 ring so when hooked up use the electric don't waste the gas like i've said but if you are using the gas You've got your igniter this side and you've got there you are your little ring there and your bigger one so there's your gas away and if you do you want to use this it's the one closest to the bathroom and it simply turns and you've got one to six on that do be careful that you don't knock this electric on when the lid's down and if you have used the hob for any time please let it cool down before you put the glass lid down coming down you've got your grill with your grill fan and to operate this like so hold until the thermocouple gets warm before releasing and that's your grill take your grill pan and oven shelves out when traveling as these can tend to make some noise when on the road or simply wrap them up in tea towels and put a tea towel on top of the um underneath the glass lid and it'll stop any rattles under here you've got your oven so your oven is there, is there. Your oven away like i said remove your oven shelf when traveling or wrap it up it'll stop any rattles to operate your dometic fridge turn the fridge on like so and then you have your three source selection so you've got your main power so when hooked up the plug indicates you are put that on if you are on main electric hookup which is 230 volts you've got your gas so if you're wild camping you just press your gas and it self ignites and then you've got your battery setting which fails because the engine's not running at the moment and um, this is designed to keep the temperature of the van of the fridge the same when the engine is running so what you do there is you hook the van up the night before you go away put your shopping in and then the following morning all your shopping should be nice and cool when you're ready to hit the road just put it on the battery setting and then what you can do is no matter if you drive half an hour or seven hours or longer 
your shopping should remain at the same temperature it was it's basically like a cool box setting and then next to it the coming to this side you've got your temperature so this is your temperature all the lights being the the coldest and then if you do get a warning light you can reset the um fridge there coming into the fridge you've got your removable freezer compartment and when winterizing or not using the van it's better to clean the fridge out and then to leave it open instead of having something in the way to get the stop the moisture and get some air and stop the mold and things just slide this forward and then this will stop the door from closing on itself fully allowing air around the seal in the cupboard behind the driver's seat the rear overhead locker you have your electrical consumer unit so this just is duplicated on the control panel in here you've got all your 12 volt fuses which are all then listed up here it is a good idea to go and buy some spare blade fuses so that if you do get a problem you can just isolate and fix your power supply and then up here you need these switches on so this one does your charger so this puts the power between the leisure and engine space heater is your central heating and the water heater if they aren't working check here first to make sure these lights are on they'll only work on 240 electric hookup below you've got all your 230 240 um circuit breakers so same as your house so if you do trip check here first and then check the site on here you've got your build number so this is the number unique to your vehicle so if you need any parts or anything quote this number and they'll be able to find when your vehicle was built what part is required for your vehicle when speaking with water drill and then further back in the cupboard you've got your tv booster on the back there to boost your signal should you need it and your tv aerial so when traveling make sure it's down in the vehicle and when you are arrived at site you can push it up and use the toggle to turn the aerial round on the roof but the best tip is look where the other motorhomes and caravans are pointing and you should get a tv signal to make the front lounge into a bed lift up underneath you can see that there's a leg slide the leg down slide this one out as well slide into the middle meet them in the middle put both legs down and then put your cushions the backrest in the middle and your base cushion turn upside down and put here and then there you have a large double bed and always put it upside down as it's easier to sheet Put a fitted sheet on and it's nice to lie on the flat side instead of the curved side underneath the bench seat behind the driver's seat is where you'll find the location of your leisure battery so this lift this flap and you'll be able to get into access to your leisure battery for changing it or taking it out if you do get a, another leisure battery fitted it would be fitted around here in a separate holding box and that's your main fuse there and that of course is your hookup point and you've got storage under there as well this is how to use your Accent head unit which has motorhome pacific sat nav in so go to home you've got your navigation so you can click your navigation you can pull it up there and you can save your location and you, so on and if you go back go to so this will tell you your how many yards your arrival time your speed and things so this is just a an over a haul of your sat nav when it in operation but you set the destination click here this is just showing a map of where you are so click here new route you can do a multiple route which is where it'll divert you so say you were diverting for fuel before you went to a site you can do that or a 
caravan store you can do that We've got traffic so it'll tell you where the traffic is camping lists a few campsite, uh, campsites there so close to us so you've got the, the closest one it lists to us is at Bishop Auckland and then you've got your settings so that'll be your voice your volume and so forth but to set a new route just click on new route and you can put an address or a postcode in here you save you can save them so it's easier to find and your history once you do start using it this will um this will illuminate like the rest of them and you'll be able to re-click a destination you've got an fm tuner but nowadays everything's dab so you've got a dab tuner there so what you can do is you can set your you can find what you want by just scrolling with the wheel here or using the arrows here so once you've found it press and hold and it'll save it and you can save up the six going back to home you've got camera so you can see your back end when going forward so no matter what gear you're in you can see by clicking camera this is designed as if the camera was on permanent you wouldn't be able to go to your sat nav or your radio but you can go on or off you've got disc if you put a cd in usb if you connect the usb which is in usb there got iPod which will be when you connect the USB you've got your Bluetooth so set your phone up which is nowadays how you so you go pair and you look for the pin and you connect and then ask you to sync your contacts press allow and then whoever rings you it will come up and you can also stream from your phone to the radio if you're not using a CD but you do also have these buttons here so home you've got your tuner which will go between DAB and FM and of course SRC brings this screen back up nav which is your sat nav so these are just your quick fire buttons for your, you've got your cam so it'll go to your camera your display your AV in which you don't have and you've got your bluetooth for your phone and that is your Accent head unit so to use the awning Grab your awning winding handle again the pole can extend or shorten so it just extend it a little bit pop it in so what you'll see you've got a little um bear fitting that just slots in to the awning and then all we do is wind it out wind it out so that you can reach the awning once it comes out far enough for you to reach the awning Okay, just twist the handle. So what we want to do is grab the awning leg, need to pull it out just from the side and comes down. Put the, the leg flat again, just tell you a little winder which locks into place. Set it to the height, do it on both legs and then now wind it out. The awning can come out for two and a half meters and what you'll find is when you wind it out too far it'll go slack and lose its tension on the canvas so just crank it in a little bit and then that's it you must be careful in wind if you get any high winds this will <laughs> once you've got the awning wound out so they can reach it grab the right hand side of the awning leg pull it towards you the leg will come come out rotate it round You've got a little uh, wind down here, which uh, again sets the height of the leg. You also have a foot on the base, make sure the foot is flat. Drop it down and then put the awning to the correct height and then just nip that up. That there will, uh, will ensure that it, the leg doesn't drop. And again, then just wind it out. It can wind out for two and a half meters. Once you've wound it too far, the canvas will drop and go droopy. So just wind it in a little bit so it gains its tension and that's set to the right to right depth. Now you must be careful, you have got some pins inside the garage there to pin the leg down. If it's windy, this can lift 
And again, if it's very windy, this could flip over the, the van. So please monitor it. You can get tie down straps, which will stop it from lifting. So that would certainly be something to consider. And then once you're finished and you're gonna put the awning away, okay, slacken the leg off, fold it up, make sure that the, the bottom foot folds to 90 degrees, parallel with the leg, pop it into there, and then push left, and that just clips in. And you can hear that clunk, that's it nice and safe. And then we can now wind the awning back in. In, it'll click in nice and sturdy. There we go. It's a little bit finished, get there, and then it just comes out. So there we go.